The Mayan civilization in its peak was probably the most civilized, and, uh, the most sophisticated and self-confident civilization on the planet. They had incredible mathematics. Uh, they had a sophisticated calendar. They did astronomy. They could predict eclipses. But probably one of the most remarkable things about the Mayan civilization was around about AD 900, the population went from around about 22 million to only a few hundred thousand in just over a generation. The civilization collapsed for reasons that are still under some debate. But the archaeological evidence points very strongly towards the underlying cause of the collapse of the Mayan peoples was the fabric of the civilization. And when I'm talking about the fabric of the civilization, I'm talking about their soil. Motivated a little bit by the fact that despite their incredible sophistication and the mathematics and their ability to predict things like, incidentally, the world is going to end on the 21st of December 2012, according to the Mayan calendar, I took it upon myself around about 10 years ago to figure out how long we've got with our soil. And guess what? Well, we're in a very similar position to the Mayans. We have around about, at least according to my very rough calculations, around about 50 years of topsoil left on the planet, which is a pretty, pretty stunning fact. And so I set on, a, on a, a journey, a quest, to try and figure out what it is that keeps soil alive. And one of the things that we must understand about soil is it is absolutely full of life. If you pick up a piece of, just a handful of soil and hold it in your hand, you'll have more microorganisms in your hand than people who've ever lived on the earth. You'll have more biological diversity than in an entire African savanna. And that soil, the soil on the planet, holds almost all of the fresh water that we ever use. So soil is full of life, but surprisingly, despite the fact it's full of life, we've never viewed soil as an ecosystem. So that's, to me, a little bit about trying to understand how to save the orangutan without paying any attention to the rainforest. So the first thing we did, uh, I'm a very keen fan of the, move of the TV show ER, and whenever anything goes wrong in ER, they take it to a CT machine, and that's exactly what we did with our soil. We, this is the first time that anybody has ever visualized the soil habitat. It's a high-resolution micro-CT image of soil. These structures, the pore spaces you're looking at here, are about a third as thick as a human hair. And this is where the microorganisms live in soil. Now, the astonishing thing, when we looked at this and we did some clever stuff with mathematics and figured out that the structure of this habitat is not random. The fact that we can fly through it like this, the fact that this pore space is all connected, means that something is organizing soil at the scale of the microorganism. So we tried to figure out what that might be. And not surprisingly, perhaps, we found out that it's the microorganisms themselves that are organizing soil. And we did some clever computing and mathematical modeling, and this is an example of, of one of these models where we looked at how microbes distribute themselves in the habitat space. And what we found was that where the particular site in soil is a really good place for microbes to live. They cover the surface like this. This is a fungal mycelium. It covers the surface, and this protects those habitats from being degraded. Where the sites are not so good, that doesn't happen, and those sites get degraded. So over time, the best sites win over the bad sites, and soil is continually in a state of self-improval through this interaction between microbes and structure. So where does the energy come for all of this? All of this reorganization, moving stuff around, takes energy. Well, the energy comes from the sun, but because soil is a dark place, it comes from the sun via plants. Plants catch carbon. Carbon flows through the plant. Around 20% of that carbon goes out through the roots into the soil and feeds the microbes. We, the, the microbes get their energy. They need to do all this great stuff to make soil do all the stuff that we depend on to do from carbon. And all we need to do is find ways of getting carbon from the atmosphere, where there's too much of it anyway, back into the soil, 
where we've been steadily removing it for the last, uh, for the last 50 years or more. So the solution to all of this, and there is a solution, is that as well as thinking about how we're going to feed the world in the future, we must first feed the earth. That's not the whole solution, of course. We need to deal with poverty. We need to deal with starvation. We need to deal with the overconsumption of food, which puts more and more pressure on our soil than is absolutely required. But if we deal with that overconsumption, that just helps soil. And the bottom line is, if we've got healthy soil on our side, everything else we can manage. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you.